First and foremost, the people that I'm going to talk about, I'm really thankful that they welcomed me into their homes because it, it really gave me a great learning experience that we're all just human beings. Sometimes I use a pillow and I don't have a pillowcase. No disrespect to any of them. One girl I met, very good looking. Um, I took it upon myself to introduce myself for one. Uh, in particular, in her language, in Japanese, she found that really intriguing. Plus, I'm black, so that's going to make me stand out. You know, you want to you want to stand out when you're trying to get these girls that always work. So I highly recommend you learn the language. Uh, spoke to the girl, get to know her. You know, we we would meet sometimes. Um, usually we would meet in the Yokohama areas because she lived. I would say she lived more closer to Yokohama. And at the time I was staying in Yokosuka. So I would travel maybe about 45 minutes via train to her place. And um, well, on this, I would travel about 45 minutes via train to get to Tokyo. But um, when we would meet, we would normally go to um, uh, Minato Mirai with the big Ferris wheel. We would actually go there, have dinner and stuff like that. Uh, she was somewhat of like a party girl, always out, dressed in the latest fashion, really, really, really good looking. Um, yeah, so, you know, we met a few times. I'm a male, she's a female, things happen. Yeah, so that happened quite, a, quite often. But yeah, so uh, one day uh, a mutual friend of ours was like, hey bro, I actually know where she lives at. And I'm telling you, a lot of these girls, you should actually get the opportunity to go to their house and see how they're living. You can really know like who the person is. But you know, that kind of applies to everybody. But there is a stigma that like, you know, Japanese people, you know, the most well-kept individuals on the planet. So I was really interested to in seeing how this girl was living. I told my friend, yo, that's a great idea. It just so happens though, she doesn't live near the train station, uh, which is like the the, um, the JR line or whatnot. She doesn't live near there. So we, ha we would have to take my car, jump in my S2K, jump in the S2000, ended up go driving out to, uh, it was somewhere near Yokohama. I'd say it was about maybe 25 minutes south of the actual JR line of Yokohama. So um, we're in this vicinity where if we did take the train line, we would probably either have to A, walk for a very long time or two, we would have to take someone's bike, which is every bike has a lock on it, so that's not gonna happen. So we definitely needed to take my car. Take my car, we get there, we get to the front door. Knock on the door, girl opens the door, completely goes ghost. And I'm just like, okay, either you two have something going on, or I'm just really good looking. So I think it was because I was really good looking. That's probably what it was. No, um, the girl goes ghost because what was inside of her house is what this story is really about. So she baits me. She's just like, hey, you can come in if you want to. You don't have to or whatnot. Keep in mind, we're both hysterical about it. I'm finally out of my realm of being near a train station. I'm more so like in Japan, Japan. Anyone who lives in Japan for, I'd say, well over five years, they'll tell you. You see a different side of Japan when you're driving and when you get the furthest away from the train station. If you're only taking the train lines, you're only going to see that of Japan. You're not going to see everything else. We, um... Yeah, I don't know what I should do with my hair, but I'm probably gonna cut this thing, bro. For real, it gets in my way, it's too long, kind of crazy. Hey, uh, convince her to let me go inside. Get inside, bro. Like, if there, I could have sworn there's a saying that like the hotter the girl, the messier her place is. Like, that definitely applied to her. It really applied to her. Her place, yo, that it was kind of crazy. Like, I get the makeup, but imagine makeup just being like. Inf it, it's, it was a two bedroom. Imagine makeup just being infiltrated like all over the place. But some of this makeup material was just like, it's been left there for like years. You got dust everywhere. You had a lot of cobwebs. Dirty laundry. Um, some of the mattresses, like you could tell that they were flipped over, but they had like period stains on them and stuff like that. Um, utensils and stuff. Like we've eaten at like five star restaurants together and we've done a lot of like classy things together so when I went to her place and I saw that I was just like really confused 
it wasn't a bad experience. It was just you don't really uh, you can't really judge people off of just like how you see them socially exterior. But I just wanted to see if the stigma was legit. If that's how if Japanese girls, you know, if they're just really like nitpicky and diligent on as as how the uh, has as how they're seen in, in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like if some people say, oh, I'm dating a Japanese woman, nine times out of 10, you're gonna think, oh, okay, their house gotta be spotless clean. No, I didn't apply to this girl. And this girl was like, she has like good job, good good salary, everything. It was just her house was a fucking mess. So I was just like, yo, this is hella crazy. But it was so bad to the point to like, I couldn't even sit down anywhere. Cause I just felt like, you know, I was just kind of stuck. And she knew that. So now it made sense why she didn't want to let me in. Now. Uh, myself and her, we have a mutual friend upon another mutual friend and so forth and so forth on whatever. They apparently come over and they do the birds and the bees in one of those rooms. And I looked at one of those rooms and I was like, it was crazy, man. We're talking cobwebs and dust. I don't know why. The reason why I, t I say cobwebs and dust is because, uh, well, before I finish that story, that's going to come up again. Um... I left, there's a store called Auto Box. I wanted to go get a part for my S2K. So I took my homeboy, we left, we went to, uh, it was somewhere near Fusa. Got the part, took us four hours, came back. Her place was spotless clean. Like extremely, extremely clean. Like, like she was about to have like an inspection in the military or something. It was really, really, really clean. So I give it to her for that. But when she did that, it just made me think like, yo, if she's capable of doing such a thing like that, what else is she capable of doing? Because it looked like she had like a hundred people come in her, her in her crib and mess it up. And then those same hundred people came back and cleaned it up. It looked like a, a different apartment. I almost didn't think we were in her apartment. And I thought she was playing a joke, but she wasn't. But yeah, she's a good person. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? I'm just over here spilling beans because I got a YouTube channel. That's it. But uh, story number two, um, there's a girl that I met. Uh, she had a uh, tukso no irizumi, uh, She had a lot of tattoos. And uh, she was a tattoo artist in Shinjuku, so I thought that was awesome. I wasn't her friend because I wanted to see how she was living. I was just her friend because I thought she was a cool person. She invited me to her place. So I said yes, took it as an opportunity to say, hey, hey, how are you living? Shinjuku is another big city. I want to see how people are living because, you know, I may be a person one day where I might want to live in the Shinjuku area and I want to see what, what people are working with. I want to see like how, what the views look like. Like if it looked like something like this, you know what I'm saying? Like if the house looked like that, like, like that house right there, you know, zoom in on that, zoom in on that, Tokyo okay, kid, okay, zoom in on that. Yeah, I want to, I want to live there. You know what I'm saying? So I became her friend. Go to her crib. Same thing again, cobwebs, dust. But she was organized though. She had the shoes. When she, it was just her. She was single. And um, when you first walk in, you're just like in her apartment. You're in all the rooms, and they got like a little door right here for the bathroom or whatever. When you first walk in, she had an awing, not like awing, but she had like a like a shelf that goes around like kind of like half, like a little bit of a square. And all of her shoes that I see her go out in, or I used to see her go out in years ago, like I'd say maybe two years prior, everything just has dust on it above and cobwebs. And I'm just like, yo, like, I know they sell like a little, little duster around here or something, man. Like, yo, this is really fun crazy i can't believe this but you can't judge a book by its cover you just never know nowadays so that's my two stories about going over japanese girls houses well that i can talk about um the other stories i'm probably gonna make another video about those think about how i want to explain it to you guys just so i don't give away too much information and just so some of y'all don't know who these girls are but uh yeah that's pretty much it no disrespect to, to any of the individuals I talked about. It was really cool. It was a good, good um, learning experience. It just helped me learn that regardless of where you're at in this world, like human beings are human beings. Everyone's gonna have some type of flaw. I wouldn't even call it a flaw. I would just say they're just being themselves. They're in their home. So I'm really thankful that they welcome me into their homes. So, uh, but yeah. So that's pretty much the video right there. Um, both girls did work really great jobs. One. Uh, two, they did have really great personalities. Uh, three, like the the enthusiasm, the the the, the caring, that was all there. Did they go out a lot? Yeah. Did they party a lot? Mm, yeah. Um, they were just living their lives, but in their own personal spaces, you know, they just were extremely lenient. 